Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great day today. I had a fun day yesterday building a picnic table with my wife and waited till today to record something about it. Now it's pouring down rain. It was such a beautiful day yesterday, but now it is pouring down rain and um, just gloomy. But I wanted to share this, this picnic table with you guys because it's a very simple design and one that I've been using for many, many years. So I've probably made I don't know, 30 picnic tables or so, uh, and sold them, and this is the first one I actually made to keep here. So let me walk over here, I had to get the bikes out of the rain. But this picnic table design is pretty darn strong. There's three braces that span the entire bottom side of the top, uh, one on either side and one in the middle, to kind of keep the top as flat as it can be. And then underneath the seat, there's also another vertical piece for support so the seat doesn't sag you have nice wide nice wide legs those are two by ten legs with bolts that are spaced quite a bit away from one another so there's a lot of uh, restriction to racking and like i said i've made several of these this particular one is five feet in length bought 10 foot long boards for the top and the seats and cut them in half uh, you can use this exact same design for basically any length table you want. Uh, you know, buy eight foot boards and make an eight foot picnic table. I would typically use these. The vast majority of this design uh, that I've made have been six foot tables. So you buy 12 foot long boards, cut them in half, six foot table. However, I have made uh, two 12 foot tables with really no structural changes. So. The 12 footers, you do the, the side pieces like this, and then you add one more side assembly right in the middle. So this is a design that can be stretched as far as you want, and it still remains really, really strong, really, really solid. This one is made out of treated lumber. It's going to live on the porch of my shop here. And we're going to let it air out for a couple months to get this uh, treated lumber moisture out of it. And then we'll end up doing this this red paint, uh, this opaque paint, this deck stain or whatever it's called, to match the bench and the other outdoor furniture that we have. But it's going to live out here for you know grilling out on the weekend or whatever. Uh, I wanted to record this build, but and I started to record it actually. I got I don't know a, a few cuts in and recorded some stuff with my wife. Started to put some screws in on camera. And it was, it was such a beautiful day, and it was one of those things that uh, I just just wanted to have a fun day building with my wife. So I decided to put the camera down and just just have fun building with my wife without recording it. So uh, if you're interested in making one of these tables, I got free diagrams and plans on my website. You can check that out. And I guess I'll just cut this video off here and then walk you through how to build it with some SketchUp diagrams. It's an inexpensive project. This particular one was, um, like I said, it's, it's five feet in length and I believe it was $78 in lumber, uh, which I went to a, a local place here, which was not the cheapest place in the world to get it from. Uh, and I already had the screws and glue. Oh, one of the things, that, the glue, let me talk about that. So. Uh, on all of these that I've made previously, I used um, Type On 3, but in this case you can see some smeared right there, which isn't that big of a deal. Uh, we're going to paint this like I said, but I used that um, PL Premium Construction Adhesive, and it did a really good job of holding this stuff together. This, this batch of lumber that I got was really, really cupped. All of these boards were cupped a tremendous amount, so I had to flatten them down with clamps uh, as I screwed this together, and we got a bunch of cracks, but that's okay. It's a picnic table. It's built like a tank. This thing will last, it'll last forever if I keep it under this awning, too. Uh, but anyway, just a quick little um, encouragement to make one of these. They're inexpensive and they'll last forever. So you guys take care, have a great day, and the rest of this video will be a SketchUp instruction of how to build it. As I said, I've made many of these picnic tables 
uh, in various different lengths from this exact same design in the past. And I have quite a few of these in commercial spaces in the next town over. Not quite a few. I have a few of these in commercial spaces in the next town over. And they're holding up just fine. So uh, this is a design that I trust. It's strong and it's really easy to make. There's nothing complicated about any one of these cuts. Uh, I made every one of these cuts. I made the entire picnic table on the porch with a circular saw and a drill and a speed square. So you don't need a whole shop full of tools to make this. Uh, me and my wife were just cutting along and assembling and just having a good time. It was, it was really nice. So a couple things with this design. Number one, I wanted all the hardware to be on the inside so you don't have any screw heads to interact with on the outside. Uh, you'll see all of these little not all these little icons and shapes here. These are uh, pocket hole locations. And for my initial uh, picnic tables that I made many years ago, I used to use pocket hole screws. For this one, I just didn't think it was really necessary to be honest with you. So I used just regular coated decking screws for exterior use. And I just drove them in on an angle similar to a pocket hole screw. So I just made pocket hole screws without pocket holes, basically. So you don't necessarily need a pocket hole jig to do this, although your end result will be a little bit cleaner, I would imagine. Um, what else about this design? So these legs are two by tens. There's a lot of surface area here to create a nice solid connection between the leg and then this horizontal stretcher right here, the seat support. And where these two pieces intersect, you'll notice it's a parallelogram shape. And a parallelogram has a short diagonal and it has a long diagonal. So not represented in this model is a couple carriage bolts along the long diagonal. Before doing the carriage bolts, it's best to secure it with screws just for convenience sake. So on the inside during assembly, when I add this piece right here, I add two screws along the short diagonal, which will allow these two pieces to be pinned together temporarily so that I can add two carriage bolts along the long diagonal. And that just creates a nice, strong, sturdy connection uh, that will resist racking and movement long term, which is really nice. This bench will stay stationary and stay strong and not wiggle and wobble back and forth. Uh, I think that's basically basically it for the initial th talk about it. Oh, I also added this stretcher underneath the seat just to resist sagging as well. So let's get in with the build first, uh, first mentioning the cut list. Now, here's all the dimensions for a six foot picnic table, but I don't recommend cutting all of your pieces first. And the reason being is this is basically a construction grade project. It's not fine furniture. So you can be off just a little bit here and there and here and there, and it's not really gonna matter. But if you're off a quarter of an inch here, quarter of an inch there, quarter of an inch there, that may add up, it may be an accumulative error, that add up to say three quarters of an inch, which will be a problem if you've already cut a board three quarters of an inch too short because you were paying attention to the diagram and not your actual progress. So I recommend using this for reference, but only cut what you need and then verify your measurements before you cut with your actual project. So first off, the first things to cut are these two boards, cut them into four pieces, three for the top and then one bench slot over here. And then also we need these three 27 and a quarter inch long pieces of the two by four, two by four by 10. So with those cut, we can start assembly. And basically this whole picnic table is built upside down. Um, on the ground, on sawhorses, whatever, it doesn't matter, just upside down. And what I did is I clamped these three pieces together because they had kind of a, a bow to them. You want to smash the seams because this is, it's treated lumber, so it's going to dry out a little bit and, and any type of cracks or seams that you have are just going to get larger long term. Uh, clamp these together and then this board is glued and screwed on from below. Like I said, we're building this upside down, so make sure this is the bottom surface facing up. Glue and screw this in place with a clamp in place. Bring the clamp over here, do the same thing. Glue this, glue and screw here and then one in the middle. Now, typically with furniture projects, you don't want to glue down a large joint like this where the boards are perpendicular to one another because of expansion and contraction. 
However, this is pine. Pine is forgiving. It's treated lumber. This is not fine furniture. No matter what you do anyway, this wood is eventually going to have some cracks developed. So it's not that big of a deal at all. I'm going for pinning everything for structural stability rather than worrying about uh, some fine woodworking details, really. After those are all installed, we can add the legs. And in this case, we're just trying to get really close to the measurements. Don't, don't freak out about getting precise. And what I mean is there's a slight gap here in my model between the legs, right? Uh, I didn't worry about that at all. I just found the center point on this panel, made a little tick mark with a pencil, and then I put my uh, leg points together right there. So I was really close to this outside measurement, but I didn't sweat it trying to get it perfect. 56 and 3 eighths of an inch. Just get it close. That's all that matters. The, 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 one of the ways that you can introduce error here is with cutting all this stuff by hand. So I drew a line at 30 degrees. All these cuts are 30 degrees. And then I freehand it with a circular saw. I may be off by one, two degrees or so. That's not the, that's not the end of the world. So don't stress trying to get these exact measurements. What is important in this case when we're clamping or securing all these legs is the distance from the bottom of the leg to the top of the top should be somewhat the same. So who cares what this measurement is so long as all four of these are close to that measurement. And the reason why this can vary slightly is because just like I said, you're cutting this all by hand with a circular saw. And if you're off by just a degree or so, then this is going to be up or down just slightly and it may affect some stuff. So it's okay if this is not 100% touching the bottom of the tabletop. I'm exaggerating it here just to show you. Uh, it's okay if it's off by just a smidgen. Just trying to get this measurement from this point to here pretty darn close all the way around. So one way to do this by yourself, and I was showing my wife, is to use clamps from this leg to this piece over here. So clamp this in place on this inside right here on all four of these, and then you can walk around it and just kind of bump it and tweak it, make sure everything's good. Uh, I also added glue in between the leg and these, brace pe these bracing pieces. Um, and once everything looked good, I just drove a bunch of screws, I think four, maybe five, from the leg into the piece next to it. Once the legs were pinned in place, the next step is to add this interior piece. Now, I used pocket hole screws according to this original design. Uh, like I said, on the picnic table in the beginning of this video, I did not add pocket hole screws. I just put a lot of construction adhesive uh, in between all of these pieces and added a bunch of screws from this board into the legs as well as this board into the bottom of the tabletop. Basically, you're just having a large surface area for glue to, to kind of clamp and hold everything together. The glue is going to do a lot as far as grabbing everything together. After both of these are installed, the other, the, the seat horizontal pieces, the seat supports, those can be added. Now the easiest way to get these to line up is to cut some scrap blocks at this particular distance, 14 and 3 eighths of an inch from the top surface of the tabletop to the top surface of the seat support. Just cut some scrap blocks, two of them, uh, one under here, one under here, and then it'll hold it stationary while you can get this symmetrical. Just measure the distance. Uh, I'll use this front one as an example. To measure the distance from this intersection to this outside point, this intersection to this outside point, make sure it's all the same, and then secure it on the inside on the short diagonal with two screws here, two screws here. Once they are fully secured, then you can drill through on the outside in, so the tear out is on the inside, and add your carriage bolts and nuts and washers to lock this connection in, in and uh, that'll create a nice sturdy foundation uh, for the bench to sit on, or for the picnic table to sit on. I keep calling this a bench. Next up is the, oops, let's hide that piece. Next up is the stretchers in between, and these are important to, to basically make the legs parallel. So when I was building this, I was off on, on an angle somewhere so that, I'm going to exaggerate this, but both of my leg assemblies were bent out just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit. And 
what you want to do is measure from the inside of the leg over here. I'm sorry, the inside of this piece right here. The inside of this piece to the inside of this piece to get the measurement for this piece. So that means the, it'll, it'll bring the legs perpendicular to this surface here. Uh, and then also bring the legs parallel to one another. So you can kind of push these as needed. Uh, in my case, uh, I wanted to keep all of the screws on the inside. However, because my legs were leaning away from one another, uh, I had to put two screws on the outside of this board into this to kind of pull everything together. Once everything was pulled together and pinned, then I could use screws on the inside on a diagonal like here, like pocket hole screws, and secure everything on the inside and make everything nice and strong. After these two pieces are installed, then these legs should be pretty darn perpendicular to the top. Close enough, anyway. At that point, we can lock everything in place with these two diagonal braces. So these are just regular 2x4s, 45 degree angle cut on either side, and a, two screws going into this connection, two screws going into this connection, and this is the way to really lock everything down. So, you know, one of the strongest geometrical shapes is a triangle. If you want something to stop moving or stop racking, establish a triangle somewhere. So this will stop a lot of wiggle in the left and right direction in this particular orientation. After those two have been added, the seats can be added. And I use one clamp on the inside corner over here somewhere to clamp the seat to this rail, clamp the seat to this rail. Once it is in this orientation, then you can uh, add all of your screws as necessary, as many as you want to hold this down from the inside out. Once the seats are installed, you roll it over and you enjoy it. That's basically it. Hopefully you are encouraged to make one of these. Uh, it's a strong design. It'll last a really, really long time. And if you're like me, your family will enjoy it. I love eating out outside on the rare, beautiful weather days we have here in Mississippi. So like I said, I have some free dimension diagrams as well as the SketchUp file for this on my website. If you're interested, there'll be a link in the descri description below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, other than that, go to my website, jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter so you'll be notified of everything that I publish. That's it. You guys take care. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.